first of all, give me a sense of what you're seeing with inflation. So some of your colleagues see transitory inflation. Others actually see inflation that's a lot more sticky, that could be entrenched. Like, what are the pros and cons of either view? Well, first of all, this is clearly an issue that we discussed at length in Washington in the annual meetings of MF and the G20. Uh, there are certainly price pressures now. They come from uh, forces which have to do with the higher energy prices and commodity prices, as well as supply bottlenecks. But these supply bottlenecks, which result in uh, shortages of uh, microchips and, um, and semiconductors and therefore hamper uh, industrial production uh, really are due to the substantial increase in demand that has been um, higher than expected in, in a condition of supply that was still uh, substantially reduced by all the pandemic measures. And this is a transitory effect. Uh, it will take time. Uh, there, there, we even have seen uh, difficulties in some important harbors, uh, but all these, um, uh, I think, is really an issue of adjustment of supply to demand. On the energy prices, uh, we have, ag again, the effect of demand in some countries, on some areas, uh, the effect of weather conditions, which have uh, clearly pushed up demand for energy, and therefore with mm -hmm. that uh, prices, but also there are geopolitical issues that clearly are in the in being resolved uh, these days. Uh, we still think that, and I still think that this is largely transitory, even if these pressures may uh, last for some months uh, and well uh, during next year. But uh, obviously we will have to monitor them and we will keep uh, trying to yeah. understand also the working of supply chains. Yes, but uh, Governor, if you say there's you know, certainly price pressures now, would a policy mistake right now actually mean that there's nothing that the central bank does and though we have entrenched inflation? Like, what's the, the, the bigger of you know, either evil? Is it not doing anything for the moment and, and making sure that the recovery is strong or is it actually the other way around? Well, first of all, we have to understand uh, how inflation is determined in the economy. And uh, clearly, there is uh, a certainly uh, a pressure now. We are having inflation in Europe above uh, above 2%, but we do not see second round, at least I don't see second round effects uh, for the time being being, uh, being relevant, neither in wages nor in inflation expectations. Inflation expectations are still below 2%, and we Wage rates have not increased substantially during the year, nor they appear to be uh, reacting uh, excessively. So, in this sense, uh, this second round effect not being there, this implies that uh, monetary policy will remain accommodating, as, it, as we have said, uh, even if we are going certainly to uh, look through these price pressures and try to see whether something will remain. After all, if, even if we have inflation rates above 2% for some time, this will help stabilizing them at 2% in the medium term. And this is our objective. Um, Governor, the ECB's pandemic measures are set to run until March, and this is something that we've talked about a lot, and there's been some discussion on how flexible its approach will need to be after that. Do you think the ECB should transfer some of the flexibility of its PEP program to regular asset purchases? Well, first of all, flexibility has worked very well. Uh, we have uh, um, somehow been able to cope with this incredible emergency in an excellent way. Uh, and uh, we have added that to our uh, tool, tools, so we have a, a box which has something more that we can use when necessary. I think flexibility should remain should remain. Obviously, we will uh, certainly have to discuss, and uh, we have not yet started, uh, how to uh, adjust our purchase programs. Uh, certainly, we move from an emergency condition to uh, a, a, a condition in which we have really to look uh, for uh, to maintain our determination to reach our target of 2% and maintain it in the medium yeah. term. And in this sense, flexibility will help. Will help in two, in 
two ways. The first, it will help uh, against shocks that may uh, hit uh, unexpectedly. And secondly, mm -hmm. it may help to avoid fragmentation that may arise again. Uh, Governor, as part of the flexibility debate, is ECB actually considering raising the limit of purchases of debt issued by international bodies? Well, we have to discuss this, and we have not discussed it yet, so we will uh, devote uh, these coming months to exactly to, to talk about this, and we will uh, come with uh, a clear uh, decision in December. Uh, but uh, obviously, I think we are contingent on uh, the, the developments in the economy, on the date and so on. Uh, I think we, at the end, are a very open uh, governing council, and we will take the decisions that uh, not only the consensus, but most time the majority, the wide majority, thinks are necessary. Governor, would you back such a move? Is it something that you've, you, you already know what your opinion is? What, I, what do you mean? I don't understand. What, is, on the, on what the, are you suggesting? I'm suggesting, no, I, w I was wondering whether you think it's a good idea to raise the limit of purchases of debt issued by international bodies. You said ah. that it will be discussed, but do you think this would be a good idea? This is my, you are asking my opinion, not, not yes. giving your. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, I, I, think, I think this is something that has to be, to be discussed. I think it may certainly be, be something that we, we will end up doing. Um, Governor, how do you feel about the market's rate height expectations? We see interest rates rising as early as the end of next year. Is this consistent with your forward guidance? Well, uh, this is an issue that uh, clearly is uh, to be discussed. I think that for the time being, not that consistent. I think we have made it clear that we will uh, uh, be uh, somehow with these rates uh, until we really see that inflation is at 2% uh, uh, over the prediction horizon uh, and, uh, and uh, that could be uh, considered to remain that uh, permanently. Uh, over in the medium term. So for, for the time being, uh, perhaps the market has been a little bit uh, too uh, hectic, and, uh, and I think they should uh, look at our forward guidance uh, in, uh, in a more proper way. Uh, we have been very clear on that, and I think this is uh, what is going to take place. But, Governor, so, I mean, I guess you're talking about, the, you know, bond yields have risen rather sharply since the last uh, ECB meeting. Again, is this a problem for the euro area, and does the ECB have to lean against it? No, no, I think there is not a great problem in the area at large. Uh, I think we, we are doing what has to be done, and I, I don't see don't see substantial issues here. I think that uh, what we really have to maintain is favorable financing conditions, and the market has to understand that uh, this is uh, what we are determined to, 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 to reach. I mean, I don't see particular, in this moment, uh, difficulties on that side. Um, Governor, give me a sense of what your biggest concern is overall. I mean, we talked a little bit about infl inflation. How would you characterize growth right now and some of the headwinds because of the energy prices, because of the supply chain issues? How hard is it to navigate this economy right now? Well, first of all, with respect to the beginning of the year, we are we are in a condition which is much better, much better than expected at the time. Obviously, uh, it has uh, it has uh, slightly uh, uh, softened uh, in the last uh, few 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 weeks. Uh, it, the impact of the bottlenecks and shortages is there. Uh, we are projecting. Uh, uh, clearly uh, a higher rate than uh, uh, for this year and also for the next than we had uh, even in July. Uh, and, uh, and we will be close to 6%, and the area at large will be 
around five. So, so this is uh, a much quicker recovery than we had thought. At the same time, there are high divergences at the global level, and we may suffer from that. The big problem is vaccination. Uh, clearly, this has been one of the uh, fundamental factors that has improved the economic conditions of the euro area and advanced economies at large. But it is uh, not yet uh, there at the global level. And we have to do uh, all what we can to make it global, because otherwise we will uh, we will also suffer from that. There is a need for uh, developing countries really to be safer, and there is a need for us to help, but also in our interest. Um, Governor, given some of the concerns that you've just highlighted, are you able to stick to your forecasts of Italian growth for the next year? Uh, next year is, uh, well, first of all, I think that, as I was saying, we are in a better condition. What I see for next year is really the uh, effect of demand uh, being um, somehow better on two grounds. The first is uh, the saving grace that have been accumulated over the last uh, years and half uh, really now are there to be uh, to fuel consumer demand. And, the same, and, and actually, this is what already is taking place. So uh, vaccination, as I said, is crucial because a number of sectors have to be revitalized through that. And the second is investment. Investment in the private sector is uh, doing pretty well. Uh, it is uh, much, mm, uh, it has been, in Italy at least, uh, certainly very, very contained. And uh, we had uh, the effects of the double deep recession of 2008, 2013, uh, which has uh, substantially reduced them. They are picking up now. To that, it will be added the public investment that are related to the recovery and resilience plan, which is also financed through Euro, Euro area, Euro, European Union uh, funds. And if they are uh, done properly and in, uh, in uh, sufficiently uh, short time, this will certainly be a surprise also for next year with respect to what we were thinking only, only eight, nine months ago.